what gave us the prize was a very simple idea, really, uh, is the fact that you need to uh, stretch the pulses in order to amplify them, because otherwise your short pulse amplified in a laser would blow up the laser. And so this was the problem. There were short pulse lasers and, and high energy lasers, but they couldn't be put together. And this technique allowed that to happen. Did you know you were in the running for the prize? I just got a call out of the blue. I did know today's the day they announced physics uh, Nobel Prizes, and then I got a call saying it was Sweden. So I put the two and two together. Right. Um, it is a bit strange, isn't it, that you're the first woman for 55 years now to, to win the physics prize. What is going on there? Come on. It is a little surprising. I think we were even 10% women back when I was in grad school, so you would hope that at least every 10th prize would be a woman, maybe. Um, anyway, hopefully things keep, things keep getting better, and I'm sure it'll keep changing. Yeah. I mean, women, I don't know what the situation is in Canada. In the UK, the physics enrolment, I think, is about 40% women, which obviously is it's getting towards parity. But it is, still isn't parity, and in many of the other sciences, particularly the biological and medicinal sciences, the women um, are far more numerous than the men. Um, what's going on there, do you think? What, 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 yes. what holds women back in physics? Well, the bigger question is what's holding men back in the other fields. Um, so, I don't, I don't know. I think to some extent um, people do what they want to do. Uh, I've heard different things, though. I can only speak from my own uh, experience, though. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, society actually values these other ones more and so there's a bigger push to go into medicine I think than physics mm -hmm. and so I think uh, women maybe feel that to say wow society would benefit you know would feel like I should try to do that mm -hmm. so I think actually you know physics is a very small field doesn't matter if you're man or woman there's very few of us doing it so it's just the women doing it are even a rarer breed. So you get the first woman to get a prize for 55 years, just a week that Professor Alessandro Strumia of Pisa University says physics is a, was invented and built by men, it's not by invitation. Does he have any kind of point at all? Well, uh, I don't know, like, I mean, obviously Marie Curie was way out there long ago and she certainly was one of the leaders in physics and was recognized for it. So he is somewhat putting blinders on. I also do think that it, there is just the reality of the fact that women were left in, in the home and the men went out to work far more. So that it didn't matter what field it was, there would be men doing it, not the women. Let's just go back to lasers and some of the applications because we think of physics as often a very, um, uh, very theoretical subject. And I just wonder whether the this one is actually very, very applied, isn't it? These are, and, and eye surgery is a very good example, but plenty of other examples of precision instruments, cutting instruments and the like, that depended on your insight. Lasers have lent itself to applications, but you have to remember that it was Einstein in 1917 that had the first um, equations for stimulated emission. It took a long time to get from Einstein's theory to actually lasers, and then it was another 25 years before CPA. Mm -hmm. So everything just takes some time. Uh, but it starts out, everything starts out as pure science and eventually finds its way to application. Yeah, I mean, the, the Nobel Committee cited um, eye surgery, corrective eye surgery, as one of the applications. I have, I have numerous friends who've had laser surgery on their eyes. I wouldn't go near a laser beam in my eye. You know the power of laser beams. Would you have laser surgery? I noticed you're wearing glasses. Maybe you wouldn't choose to have a laser beam shone in your eye. Uh, I, I don't uh, like anything medical at all, uh, so I, I don't even like that glaucoma test where they try to push something on your eye, so uh, I would be uh, far too squeamish for that. Uh, it's not that I don't trust lasers and uh, people working with lasers, but I just, yeah, I would have to be going quite blind. Donna Strickland, Professor Strickland, many, many congratulations and thank you for, for talking to us. Thanks. Thank you very much.